Hey everyone, Jeremy here, aka Mr. UW. Today I'm going to go over the uh, update that's going to be released for the STV Multicart. What this update will do is it'll allow an auto reset feature with your STV cart. Um, it's not going to work as well as with the CPS2 uh, multi kit since the STV cart requires you to manually change the jumpers to change the game by hand. But what it will do is it will cut by half the number of times you have to power down, power back up your PCB. So it will decrease some wear and tear. So basically you'll cut the system off, you'll change the jumpers, you'll cut it back on, the game load sound will play, it'll load the game, the game load finish sound will play, as soon as the finish sound is done playing it automatically reboots and starts the game. So let me kind of show you what I've had to do here. Um, as with the CPS2 multi-cart, you have to power the cartridge separately from the motherboard to update it. Um, what you see here, this is your your SWD connector, which will, you'll, you'll use with the uh, Discovery kit to update the, the arm. And uh, let's see if I can get uh, to look here. This pin right here, this is the pin we use for the sound wire kit. It takes that hole there. But right next to it, that's going to be a ground pin. So I, I insulted a pin there and that's ground. Now in order to get 5 volts I used this large solder pad right here. And the best way to find it is you take these two pins. It's pin uh, 4 and 5 right here. And you can follow the trace. It goes between these two pins and comes up to the, the left a little bit and then there's a large pad right there. And I just soldered this wire to that pad and then I connected 5 volts there. So I put a a DuPont wire here for ground and 5 volts here and I just powered it using like a uh, a PC power supply and it kept steady voltage now this right here is the same connector you'll use just like the CPS2 multi kit um, these pins are a little smaller than the the pins on the CPS2 multi kit the pitch is a little smaller but you can still use like DuPont wires and connect them there they'll be really snug but they will work and you will be able to update the cartridge like that no problem and this here if you look you got these three there's like four pads here one two three four I soldered a wire to this fourth pad right here it's right next to resistor 25 R25 um, a wire there it's another DuPont wire and what I have here is I have the wire that's soldered to the motherboard for the reset it just plugs directly in here now some of you guys that have your modded your cartridges you'll have a more clever way of doing that I'm sure this is just a very um, basic way to do it so basically what I'll do is I'll like tape that there and keep it out of the way and then I'll just use this one um, so let me show you the motherboard now alright so here we have my motherboard this right here is the sound kit wire as we've used before but now here is our reset wire and where it, what it is is connected to IC12 right here you can see IC12 pin 8 so this is the this is pin 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and if you can see right there the wire is soldered directly to pin 8 all right and what will happen is the cartridge will get plugged in let me show you put it down you can see on this end I have just a regular pin soldered up there. So I'll put the cartridge in here. All right. The reset wire. The reset wire will get plugged into this one right here. All right. It's nice and snug. So that's the reset wire. And I will use the sound kit plug it into the original pin on the motherboard. Let me zoom in there so you can kind of see it. So reset wire, sound wire. Um, I know some people on the forums were saying so if we install this auto reset it'll make the sound wire obsolete. Not really. The sound wire still adds to the effect so um, you'll still get the sound telling you that the game is loading you'll still get the sound telling you that the game finished loading but as soon as the sound 
the finish loading sound finishes, it automatically reboots. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just one second. I'll be right back. All right, so right, here I am. I've already turned off my PCB. I've hooked up the wires like I showed you before. I've got my jumper ready for the game I want to load. I'm going to go ahead and cut it on here. There you heard the sound saying it's going to load. And yes, I did modify my personal cart to give it purple LEDs instead of the green ones. Let it load up like it normally does. You'll see one of those LEDs go out and you'll hear the sound play that it's finished loading. <laughs> Automatically reset, and there you go. And there you have it. The reset works. Um, like I said, you'd have to, in order to change the game, you would need to power down, reset the jumper, cut it back on, then it'll automatically load and reset to play the game after that. Um, the file, if you want to, uh, to update the cartridge yourself, uh, the file will be in my description you can, where you can download it. You'll just have to use a discovery, the same discovery as you use for the CPS2 multi. Um, if you don't want to reset it yourself, you can send it to me and I'll do it for a small fee at plus return shipping. Um, all right, any questions, just uh, ask away. Thanks for watching. Sit, Kishi, sit. Good dog.